Welcome to our electron line and now we get to see how Green's theorem can really help us do this particular line integral. We have a vector field that's defined and you can see that we have a 5xy in the i direction and an x cube in the j direction. We're going to integrate that over some curve and of course it has to be a complete enclosed curve in order for us to use Green's theorem and notice that we're going to integrate from 0, 0 to 2, 4 along the parabolic curve right here, y equals x squared, and then come back down along the line y equals 2x. Notice that this is a complete curve loop, and notice that we're going in a positive sense because we're going counterclockwise. dA is defined as a small little air element, dx by dy, and notice here's Green's theorem. The com complete closed line integral can be found to be the area integral over the area enclosed by the curve and the integrand is defined by the partial of x the partial with respect to x of q minus the partial with respect of y of p where p is right here and q is right there so let's go ahead and try that and see what that looks like so first we need to find the partial of q which is here with respect to x so we have the partial with respect to x of x cubed minus the partial with respect to y of p which is 5xy and this whole thing is then times dA so in this case we're going to integrate over in the y direction first then the x direction so let's write dA as dy times dx and we'll plug in the limits of integration in just a moment so this is equal to the integrals this will be equal to 3x squared minus, here with respect to y, that will give us 5x times dy times dx. So the y limits, the y limits go from the bottom curve to the top curve. So y at the bottom is x squared, y at the top is 2x. So we get x squared here and 2x here. And then if we integrate in the x direction, that will be from x equals 0 to x equals 2. So from 0 to 2. All right, let's go ahead and do this integral. So when we integrate this, realizing since we're not integrating over dy or in the y direction, the x are essentially constants. So this now becomes, we still have our first integral from 0 to 2, and this now becomes 3x squared times y minus 5x times y. And the whole thing evaluated from our limits from y equals x squared to y equals 2x. And we still have our dx for our second integral. So now we can replace every y by the upper and lower limit. Now notice we end up probably with four terms here. So this becomes equal to the integral from 0 to 2. Plug in the upper limit instead of y. So we're going to get 6x cubed since y is now going to be 2x. So we end up with 6 x cubed, 2 times 3 is 6, and x squared times x is x cubed, minus, plug in 2x for y, that gives us minus 10x squared. Now we subtract from that when we plug in the lower limit, so plug in the lower limit, we get x squared times x squared is x to the fourth, so that's 3x to the fourth, minus, plug in x squared here, we get 5x cubed, we get a minus there, minus 5x cubed. And uh, that would the whole thing would still be times dx. And let's see, we could potentially combine some like terms here. We have a 6x cubed minus a minus 5x cubed. So this is equal to the integral from 0 to 2. 6 plus 5, because the two negatives cancel out, this gives us 11x cubed. Here we have a minus 10x squared. And then here we have a minus 3x to the fourth. And the whole thing times dx. So now we can easily integrate that because now the variable is x. So this becomes equal to 11x to the fourth. So 11x to the fourth over 4 minus 10x cubed over 3 and minus 3x to the fifth over 5, evaluated from 0 to 2. Notice when plugging the lower limit, we get nothing. We only worry about the upper limit. 
x to the fourth, 2 to the fourth is 16, divided by 4 is 4, times 11 is 44. Minus, putting the upper limit, we get 8, that's 80 divided by 3, minus 80 divided by 3. And here, plug in, that would be x to the fifth, that's 2 to the fifth is 32, times 3 is 96 divided by 5. So that would be minus 96 divided by 5. And now we just have to simplify that a little bit. Looks like our common denominator is 15. I think I'm going to grab a calculator, make sure I don't make any silly mistakes here. Let's see here. 15 times 44, that's uh, 660, so it would be 660 divided by 15 minus, uh, that would be uh, 5 times 80, that would be 400 divided by 15, and that would be 3 times that, that would be uh, 300 minus 12, that would be minus 288 over 15, and let's see here, that's uh, 660 minus 400 minus 288, that would be minus 28 over 15, which is the final result of that particular line integral, but instead of actually doing the line integral and using all the parametric equations and so forth, integrating over both curves, we can simply replace that by the right side of Green's theorem, and you can see that it's much more straightforward using Green's theorem to calculate a line integral like that. And that's how it's done.